Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio It's not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule, and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, and medical well-being. And now, the best of Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Good evening, and what a fabulous evening this is going to be tonight. My spectacular guest is going to be Mark Kimmel. He'll be joining us here shortly. Um, We're actually going to be having a really great show. I've been posting it to the website uh, this week about what the topic matter is going to be, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. But while I was talking about my website, for those of you who are listening, it's www.journeyswithrebecca.com because on the website I've got all kinds of new information and updates uh, going on as well as the information about this week's guest, again, Mr. Mark Kimmel. Uh, We're going to get back with him in just a minute. But I wanted to let you know about some of the updates that we have made here at Journeys, and one of them is um, about a... um, Email that you can you can set, put your email address into us because I'm going to be doing um, newsletters for everyone and I will be mailing those out uh, usually about once a month but also for any new news or updates um, if you give me your email address it's never going to be sold I respect your privacy um, to the utmost uh, there will never be any junk or advertisements or anything like that in there but it will give you the latest events and happenings as they relate to Journeys with Rebecca either my guests or news that I think is uh, important as well as any events that may be happening uh, around the country that people might want to know about as well. Um, And I want to take a moment here, too, to say thank you to my sponsor, Faith Magazine. Um, They have been just absolutely fabulous. For those of you who have not yet done it, there is a direct link on my website. Uh, It'll take you to their website. But for those of you who would rather just write it down, it's faithmag.com. Uh, please get a hold of them because a lot of times they'll send you out a free complimentary copy of their magazine. They've been around since 1947, uh, one of the most uh, highest authorities, in my opinion, on UFOs and such, and uh, they're great people. Also, they were part of tonight's show on ABC, Peter Jennings' special report, uh, Seeing is Believing, which is part of the subject matter that we're going to be talking about uh, this evening. Um, before I forget, any each and every show, I try to answer email questions that you all would write in. Um, so you can email your questions to me at mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. There is also a direct link right on the front page under Our Journeys News or My Journeys News. Um, also, don't forget that we have coffee mugs, clothing, and apparel for uh, Journeys with Rebecca. There's also some new information or new products that will be coming out, too, so keep a look for that. And also, just as a kind of a heads up, I'm also going to be changing the website uh, here probably within the next 60 days at the most, and so that we'll have a new refreshed look. I am going to be trying to do that at least once a year. I think it's time to clean out closets, you know. Um, I'm one of those that firmly believe that at the beginning of each calendar year, it's kind of time to shake things up, as it were, and make things new and fresh for everyone. And I do that in my own house as well. I would like to direct your attention to Our World News tonight for just a moment, though. Um, there's links on Our World News. This is something that my webmaster um, really does a lot of research on to bring the latest news that may not be in your local newspapers or local news, but we believe that it's very newsworthy as it relates to either climate changes or uh, things that would affect us as individuals and, and humans here on this earth plane. Uh, Mount St. Helens, uh, there's a direct link there from the WP Herald. Um, also, there's um, some strange stuff going on in North Carolina 
with a flu-like symptom that people are actually uh, uh, dying from. Um, also, there is at space.com a huge galactic flash that's ever been detected. I talked a little bit last week about uh, the star that was uh, streaking through the galaxies. That was absolutely phenomenal. And then a huge star quake rocks the Milky Way, and that's out of the BBC out of the U.K., so all of those um, are really spectacular, but I think the one that really strikes me the most is the, the tsunami, that, you know, terrible, terrible event. Um, from the tsunami, they have now uncovered an ancient city in India. You definitely want to go get the latest information on that. All of these news articles are direct links from my website. Um, and as always, you can certainly go there, too, uh, to email me again. Any questions at mailbag at com if you'd like to set up a private reading. Um, also, my books are available, CDs, things of that nature. But I want to get to this week's guest. Uh, Mark Kimmelia will be with us here. We will be talking about UFOs being as believing. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Have questions about your love life or your job? Get your private psychic reading from Rebecca. Call to schedule an appointment at 1-888-958-2768. That number again, 1-888-958-2768. Anyway, we're here talking to um, Mark Kimmel. Uh, he was busy watching the uh, UFO Seeing is Believing a special report with Peter Jennings. First of all, Mark, is let's, let's do a little quick recap. You are the author of Trillion and Decimal. Um, very fascinating read, by the way. I can't wait until your next book comes out because I'm it's just chomping at the bit for it. Um, you've actually uh, done some writing in regards to this whole UFO thing and extraterrestrials. I prefer to call them extraterrestrials. What was your overall take on this tonight's show, the ABC special? Well, you know, Rebecca, it it was an interesting show. Uh, well, first of all, it was it was well done. I mean, it was a quality production, but that's what you would have expected from ABC. Uh, Secondly, there was nothing really new on the show. Uh, all of it was the standard kind of fare that we've seen before, Roswell, Project Blue Book, you know, a lot of the same personalities that have been talking about this thing. Uh, they talked, uh, had some people from SETI on there. Uh, so nothing really new. Uh, what I found a little bit, uh, the main theme of, the, of tonight was to contrast two different systems, if you will. One is the scientific system, and that is contrasted with all of the people who have uh, had some type of observation, some type of first-hand experience, um, and it was really kind of you know painted as a black and white type of thing. Um, I was a little disappointed in some of Peter Jennings' comments, and that he seemed to be skewing the thing putting a spin on it, if you will, talking about uh, the Roswell's true believers, uh, that they're clinging to a myth, and then continuing to say that all the observational things that we know about are a shadow of mainstream science. So a, a little, you know, a little disappointed in that, but again, nothing really new. I, overall, I was very pleased with the program in that it didn't really touch on any of the kind of things that you and I talk about. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, let me give you my quick opinion because there's there's a lot. I want to pull apart some of these things, uh, Mark, for us tonight, for also for the listening audience out there as well. Sure, sure. First of all, I, I agree with your statement about the two sides there. You know, it's it's either the, the skeptics or the non-believers versus the believers and what their experiences was. But what I found was probably the most profound thing out of that was that those who are the those who are the non-believers or the skeptics actually looked more narrow-minded, I think, at least in my eyes, than they ever, ever have before. Um, due to the fact that, you know, you, on the other hand, you have very regular, normal people talking about different things. And, like, as an example, the, the, the abductees. These are very normal, average human beings. Anybody that you would see on the street or, or work with, perhaps, or live next door to. And that, yet we have the other people, on the other hand, saying, oh, well, those are just, you know, dreams that you're coming out of out of the REM sleep. And it's the paralysis. And you're looking at it and you're going, okay, so everybody's now that is in this REM sleep is going to be uh, recalling <laughs> being abducted. Does uh-huh. that not sound absurd? You know, for me, that sounded uh, like a very absurd statement. Um, and, and as we're getting through this, it, you know, I could pin down each and every one of them that they did. But what I want to do just really quickly is to expand on, on why I think that, that they're, they're being very narrow-minded is because I am sitting here in front of me with a news article that I actually pulled up last week 
um, from a staff reporter, and unfortunately I can't tell where this actually, the article came from, but it is, um, oh, India Daily. Um, and the topic of this, Mark, is it says UFOs hidden under electromagnetic flux, invisible to human eyes, but thousands of them are hovering all around us. You know, their whole thing was is that seeing is believing, right? And they're saying, well, they're not here, just like the steady people said. You know, if they were here, I would be the first one on the bandwagon. Well, the scientists in India finally understand how UFOs hover around us without us without being visible. Uh, there's a, a city, I think it's pronounced Pune or, or, or Poon in India. The Indian Defense Research and Development Organization engineers are busy experimenting with a device that can see through the stealth effect of intense mag- electromagnetic flux. According to some of these super smart brains of India, the final stealth effect comes from creating an intense electromagnetic flux around any object. The Russians have been experiencing and experimenting with similar stealth mechanisms, and it can be created through very advanced applications of superconductors. There are paranormal means of creating this flux that make anything invisible in the true sense. So, you know, as, as, as we're, <laughs> that's just part of the article. It goes on. It gets, it gets actually very scientific. You know, there, some of these scientists are saying, well, you know, you can't travel any faster than the speed of light. You can't, you can't be here. They're, how come we haven't seen them? You know, how come they're not walking amongst us? Well, I think you and I both know that if, 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 if extraterrestrials were to sit down today and then let's say appear in the state of Ohio uh, on a street named Main Street in, in, a, in any city in Ohio, and there was a hundred of them, what do you think would happen to the population? What do you think would happen to this because of all of the stuff that they've done and all of the hype and all the things that's been going on through the years with this UFO um, extraterrestrial whole concept in, in the United States? Well, just, just a couple of thoughts uh, along those lines, Rebecca. I thought it was real interesting that ABC did not reference one, not even one, uh, event, sighting, or anything like that outside the United States. Yeah. Everything was confined exclusively to the U.S. And, of course, you and I both know that that is because so much outside the United States is so much more open. They are willing to discuss these things like what you were quoting there from India. You know, those folks there, it's, it's a regular occurrence, and it's not something that is the subject of ridicule or you know, uh, subjected to some sort of scientific scrutiny or uh, planting the seeds of doubt and all that type of thing that goes on there. That That's a U.S. phenomena that um, for somehow, you know, Peter Jennings bought into that totally. Yes, I was a little I was a little disappointed by some of his comments. I really was. Yeah. Well, more than disappointed, I was a little upset with them. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the, the abduction thing you were talking about, you know, uh, all of that uh, was done exclusively or almost exclusively with Bud Hopkins, uh, and it was concentrating on the fear, the fantasy, you know, the possibility that all of this is simply a false memory that's been planted by the by the hypnotherapist and all this type of thing. I don't know about you, but my best dreams are certainly not in the REM sleep. I get my better dreams uh, when I'm kind of semi-asleep. Uh, that, that's, that's when I do my best dreaming, at least the ones I recall. How's that? Right, and, and I think most of us are because in REM sleep, um, you know, they have proven scientifically that REM sleep is a, a different state of consciousness. And because of that, it doesn't always connect with, with our human consciousness for the purpose of memory recall. Right, and we don't, we don't remember a lot of what happens in that REM sleep. So it seemed to me they were, they were really pushing that. Uh, so it, in general, I was, you know, as I said, it was, it was interesting. I'm pleased because so much of what you and I have talked about before, uh, which is really the, the, what's behind all of this? Why are the extraterrestrials here? You know, are they really here and what are they doing and what are the messages and all that type of thing? They didn't touch on that and I was so pleased about that. They kept it strictly to the phenomena. It was, it was just a, a program about the phenomena and questioning whether or not the phenomena is for real. Well, and here's, here's where I think some of the disservice has come through with the misinformation that we've had through the years. Let's get back to the gentleman that was, um, in Roswell and I can never think of his name. Um, the man that came forward later and said that, you know, he, he recalled... Jesse this, Marcel? Yes. And, um, you know, he later on in years, he said, well, you know, this is really what happened. But because the government had already debunked it, that's why the Roswell thing, in my opinion, you, well, we're never going to know really truly what exactly happened there because first they, they said, yes, you know, this is what happened, and they turned around and said no, and then the whole Project Blue Book came up, and, you know, we found out what a farce that really was. Um, and then the scientists that worked for them, um, I thought that was rather interesting that later on he said, well, you know, I've seen so much, now I can't, I can't not believe in it. 
Yeah, Hayek yeah. finally came around. That, that I think is very interesting. You know, one of my observations about Roswell is that they came in and cleaned that up so, perf- you know, proficiently. I've got to believe that it was not the first one that they had that done that before. it wasn't a weather balloon. I, I just don't believe they were that well organized and everything um, if that happened to be the first one of these crashes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let's, let's talk about, we talked about this was really strictly related to the United States. But we know that there were, they've been, the United States has been in communication with, you know, world, other world countries, you know, other countries around the world. I believe that some of that, that we had other people from other parts of the world that was here helping us, um, in order to better understand it. I truly do. I believe that, that there's, there's still parts of the world that work, you know, a, a, a body, if you will, all by itself, a, you know, organization. I, I hate to use that word because that's a little strong, but, you know, there's people that are working around the world to be able to understand this. And just because the United States doesn't doesn't um, portray it like the rest of the world doesn't mean that they didn't they didn't act together in regards to the extraterrestrial landings or crash sites or what have you. I believe that they they have a lot more information than what they have shared. And I'm not saying it's conspiracy or government. I just or cover up. I'm just saying that there's a lot more information out there than what they shared. And I have to agree with you yeah. that well, the whole Roswell thing absolutely had to have before because it was too perfectly executed. Well, you know, I, I have come to the understanding that there truly is a, a, a well-orchestrated cover-up that's going on here. And um, unfortunately, uh, Peter Jennings didn't really, you know, he touched on that. But it, it was also more of a ridicule kind of thing that it's uh, it's uh, something that, uh, well, some people believe there might be a cover-up going on. But that was a very short segment of that program. Uh, in terms of what's going on outside the United States, um, you know, there's a, there's a fellow over there in Russia by the name of Valerie Uberoff that I had the opportunity to meet a couple of years ago. And Valerie um, runs a department for the Russian government. He has three, 400 people reporting to him. And he reports directly to Premier Putin, President Putin. Check out Rebecca's website for the latest Journeys news and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with my guest, Mark Kimmel, and we had to cut Mark off. He was talking about the lady that you were working with that was uh, from Russia, and I'd like you to kind of finish that thought process up because, boy, do we got a lot more to share with everyone tonight. Okay, let, let's uh, continue with Valerie Uberoff. Uh, he, uh, he has a staff of three or 400 people reporting directly to President Putin, and they do nothing but investigate UFOs, uh, contact, uh, crashes, and that type of thing in Russia and other parts of the world. And, uh, and they share them. They're very open about sharing the information. They talk about their discoveries, their conclusions, that type of thing. Very, very interesting and so different than what we have here in this country. You know, we think we have a very open society here, but in some ways, uh, it's very tightly managed, if you will. That, that's very eloquently put, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know like that, that you know. I, I know that you're part of the media, but uh, I think we had a demonstration tonight with uh, Peter Jennings of what the mainstream media wants to treat this as. And now you and I can go off and talk about what the reality is. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, you know, um, during the break, you and I were talking about a couple things. Let's, I want to get to my website real quick because you had mentioned, um, I, I was talking about the, oh, the tsunami uncovers an ancient city in India. Um, let me just read a couple of lines, and this is by the Associated Press, by the way. Um, the archaeologists have begun underwater excavations of what is believed to be an ancient city and parts of a temple uncovered by the tsunami off the coast of centuries-old pilgrimage town. Uh, three rocky structures with elaborate carvings of animals have emerged near the coastal town, uh, which was battered by the December 26th tsunami. I am sorry, I cannot pronounce the name of that city for love nor money. And, uh, of course, as the waters receded, the force of the water removed sand deposits that had covered the structures, which, be- uh, which appear to have belonged to a port city built in the 7th century. So there's, there's some new news there. I, I think it's worth investigating, but you also have some information on some messages and other things of what maybe, you know, I think probably what we need to do is just kind of clear the table here. You and I both believe that the extraterrestrials are among, are among us. Um, oh, yes. I certainly do. I've, I've had my own communication with them. I know that you've had your own experiences. So let's just take it from that standpoint because I'm not afraid to say that. 
Well, you know, and I think that uh, there is no way in which we're going to convince people. You know, there's really two different belief systems at work here. And um, one is uh, what I, I call the conventional paradigm, which is uh, they people that subscribe to the conventional paradigm really are very happy living in their little boxes, uh, and they feel very safe and comfortable. And then there are a small percentage of the population that are willing to explore outside the box, and I expect that that's the majority of your listeners here tonight, uh, because that's the kind of things you discuss on your show. So um, let's go there. And let's talk about extraterrestrials and the fact that, yes, they are here. They've been here for thousands of years. This is not something that just happened, you know, in, in recent times. Uh, we know that they've been here. Uh, we know that they were back. Uh, if you look at the hieroglyphics that come out of the Egyptian pyramids, and you really study those, you will see depictions of extraterrestrials. Same thing is true of the Mayan pyramids. And then, of course, there's all the Sumerian texts and that type of thing. And the translations of those talk about people coming from the stars and visiting. So uh, this has been going on a long time. Uh, what's really interesting to me is that of the people that I'm in contact with, and I now have regular contact with several hundred people on the Cosmic Paradigm Network, uh, most of the people that are part of this that I interact with on a regular basis all talk about having loving experiences with extraterrestrial contact. They don't talk in terms of abductions. They don't talk in terms of fear and hatred and loathing and all that kind of thing. Uh, they're talking about how wonderful their experiences were with the extraterrestrials. Well, let me stop you there. Why? Why do you think? Why do you think there's a difference here? I mean, what's what's your personal opinion? Why some of them are having these abduction awful experiences, and then others, such as myself and those that you talk with in the Cosmic Paradigm are having these wonderful experiences. What do you believe that's it, from? It, you know, there's an old saying, Rebecca, that what you put out is what you get back. Huh. And that's that, true. Is, <laughs> that is so true. You know, if you if you go and you think that people are out to get you, uh, sure enough, you're going to find somebody who will come take advantage of you. On the other hand, if you go and approach life and other people and you do it in a trusting manner and you do it very straightforward with truth and love, that's the kind of people you will find in your life. And I think it's it's also extremely true here when we're dealing with off planet extra planetary peoples that uh, what we put out is what we get back. You know, I, I've now talked, as I said, to several hundred people that have had direct interactions with ETs, and all of them, uh, let's say, let's say 99% of them will tell me that those experiences have been very uplifting, uh, and they and they would welcome further contact. Now, there's about one percent. And I have talked to some of these people. I've talked to oh, a, half, a handful, should we say, of those that uh, say they were abducted, that have had terrible things happen to them, and are still very much afraid of the whole the whole situation. Well, I think that some of that fear has been bred just through the last 45, 50 years in this country. Breeds the fear. Well, fear fear is rampant. You yes, know, it in is. this country really right is. at this moment, uh, all you have to do is read about the latest uh, terrorist incident. Uh, you know, the, the terrorist alert, is it at level orange or yellow or where are we? And we just get bombarded by, by the mainstream media with all of this fear factor. And so it's no wonder that some of these poor people have some interactions with uh, ETs of one sort or another. You know, you, you, we had talked earlier about these ETs that are among us. Uh, probably most people that have some sort of an extraterrestrial experience, uh, in my experience, that not all of these are necessarily with a physical phenomenon. It, it's a very spiritual thing. A lot of my interactions take place, uh, the concepts I get, the things I put into my book, the uh, directions I get, that type of thing, are very non-physical. You know, we're, we're not talking about the little gray guys uh, coming into the room, that type of thing. We're talking about concepts, the telepathic messages, and that type of thing that happen to me. Well... Let's talk a little bit about that. You you have some specific messages that you're here to share with us tonight. Is that true? Well, there there are a series of messages that have been coming to us over and over and over again. Okay. Well, let's get back. Uh, Mark, we're going to interrupt you, and we're going to talk about those here in just a minute. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, this is Rebecca. This is the place where your journey begins. Is your career or business headed in the right direction? Is your love life all it can be, or is it missing something? Perhaps you're still looking for that someone special. 
and those closest to you. Will what they do influence or affect you? For truthful, accurate, and compassionate answers to your unique life's journey, contact me by calling 1-888-958-2768 to schedule your personal and private reading. Where will your life's journey take you? Don't forget to find out where your life's journey will lead you. Call Rebecca to set up your personal and private reading at 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. with Rebecca. We're here with Mark Kimmel. And Mark, we have to cut you off each and every time you just get started in these great stories and then I have to go, wait a minute, break time. <laughs> and then you're so going to tell me where I was. Your story, that'd be great. <laughs> so where, where were we last time? Well, the last time we talked, we were we were talking about the messages that, that are here that okay. you're getting and it's not always a physical experience, but it's sometimes a spiritual, it's a telepathic communication and it was about what the uh, ETs are saying. Well, here, here's some messages that the ETs are giving us. One is that the environmental degradation on this planet is now reaching extreme proportions. You know, we, we have the polar ice caps melting at a rate that is ten times the historical rate. And uh, 2004 was the warmest year in 2,000 years. So things, things are really changing here. And sure, I can find some scientists will say, well, this is just the natural phenomena is just the natural warming of the earth. But what the extraterrestrials are saying is you earth humans are contributing to this environmental degradation. You're responsible in large part for it through the burning of the hydrocarbons and you're going to be you, you are you are now past the point where you will be able to reverse this with your own efforts. And oh, they also man. talk about the fact that there is another planet not that far away that's self destructed and it was not in that much different shape than what we're in right now. So this is serious stuff, and it, uh, it is a it's a message that has been given to us beginning in about 1975 with Billy Meyer, and it has been repeated. And a number of the people that have had direct contact with ETs, this one message keeps coming back over and over and over again. And well, and I'm only going to say I'm only going to say one thing to that. It's amazing to me that. Um, the powers that be in the United States of America for many, many years, not necessarily just the current powers that be, have um, not faced this issue head on and have not done something to make changes in the United States about, you know, about pollution, about all of the other stuff. So it's amazing to me that it is, that you know, that our whole EPA, all of that stuff is, is now in the back burner. Oh, we, um, we, we don't even hear about yeah. it in the news and it's um, or from our government. And, and I think that and I was thinking about this the other day, Mark, actually, is about I think we need some more lobbyists or something to go in and in, in start saying we need to do something. Um, I don't know if that's going to help, but certainly I think any step that we take is certainly um, better than, than sitting back and, and being apathetic about it as well because yeah. they're not going to take care of it for us. We have to do it ourselves. So. I, I think the environmental movement is pretty well dead in this country, It is unfortunately. It's sad. It makes me it very, sad. very sad that it's not even on. In, yeah. You know, it's not even an issue. I'm, I'm like, oh, we got the focus all wrong here, kids. Yeah. But let, let's. Uh, is that is a, that part of what? Yeah. What what the the rest of the messages are like? The, is the tip of the larger iceberg here? Is well, that what they're let saying? Me give a couple, let me give a couple more messages. And the second message they're saying is that the um, you you have these incredible number of nuclear devices running around the planet here. Uh, you have enough to exterminate life, and that we foresee that if you do not go and destroy all the nuclear devices, sooner or later you're going to have a worldwide holocaust. Because, you know, sooner or later some some terrorist, somebody is going to go and explode one of these bombs, and it's going to be on American territory, and you know we're going to go and find somebody to blame, and we're going to go back, and we're going to bomb them. And then, then what happens? This thing just escalates totally out of hand. So that, that's the second piece of the message. Uh, and the third piece of the message is that we are using chemicals and biologicals in an irresponsible manner, that we are actually degrading our own genetics by doing this, and that uh, we, we don't need all of the insecticides, pesticides, all the chemical additives to our food, 
all the things that uh, we ingest on a regular basis, and those are not necessary. But we, we have really gotten into a, a trap here, and uh, we need to go and look at those seriously and do something about them. Well, um, I was reading an article, um, gosh, I can't even remember. I think it came from um, either a British newspaper or an English newspaper. I can't remember. But they did a, a study on children uh, in regards to those who are considered ADD or hyperactive. Yes. Um, and they fed them, these same children, they fed them a diet of foods that, that would be normally eaten, such as, uh, you know, cereals, sugars, uh, uh, box of dinners, et cetera, and so forth. And they monitored them. Then they went back and uh, fed these children uh, only natural food. And their behavior turned around. There was a overall 70% improvement on their behavior, their focus, their attention, all across the board from just changing their diet and getting the additives, the junk, the preservatives, and the chemicals out of their body. I, I and, you went know, through we've this. seen such a rash yep. of that. Yep. I went through this with my own son. Me too. I did too. I did the same thing. Everybody thought I was crazy, and that was back in the 70s, you know? Exactly. <laughs> And uh, I we found like, out that by changing the diet, we were able to go and just decrease the hyperactivity and everything else that was going on. And so I'm quite sure that, you know, that's exactly true. So there's some very good science coming out of the U.K. Uh, it seems to be much more in tune with the kind of things, that, uh, you know, looking at the bigger picture. Another, another thing that's come out of the U.K. recently is a study where they've been studying the birds and the butterflies over there in on the British Isles. And they have seen a dramatic decrease in the number of species, something like a 70% decrease in the number of types of birds, butterflies. And they're projecting that, you know, we're, we're about ready to go and have a, a worldwide, well, you know, re real searching for a word here, which, which means it's like an a, extinction. A dissemination. Exactly. Hang on and we'll be right back. Um, don't go away. We've got more with Mark and Journeys of the Back in just a minute. Talk with an intuitive touch. Journeys with Rebecca. Listening to Journeys with Rebecca, we're here with Mark Kimmel. And, Mark, we have really just covered a lot of material. And, you know, unfortunately, these shows are always so short. <laughs> when you're, when we're chatting, it just, just amazes me. It amazes me how fast an hour can go. Um, but before we, we go any further, I, you know, we've talked about all kinds of information. I know that you have a wonderful website that I'd like you to share with everyone, along with some of the new information coming out, you know, so that we don't run out of time and we're trying to cram it in at the very last second here. Okay, on my website, there is some very interesting information. First of all, on the website, if you go to Latest News, we post on a daily basis all of the UFO sightings from all over the world. And we try to keep that up to date. And these are all of the acknowledged sightings from all over the world, regardless. Of, you know, we had all the India stuff on there. We had all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that's Latest News. Now, we also post on there a lot of the environmental things that are going on because that's all tied in together. And then on that same site, you can get a free extraterrestrial identification kit. And brand new, it's only been on there a very short time, you can get a free extraterrestrial historical timeline that takes you back a few thousand years and shows you where these extraterrestrials have been visiting this planet for thousands of years. And then, of course, you're going to subscribe to my free newsletter. And, Rebecca, I will make sure you start getting that. And then one, of, one so of the really right. exciting things we're doing right now is we have created something called the Cosmic Paradigm Network. And that's a group of us that have committed to dedicating ourselves to a positive transition for this planet. And so folks can sign up for that. If you're really interested in making a difference, if you really want to go and support each other during this difficult time we have right now, and if you want to be, you know, on the inside in terms of the news that's circulating, we uh, send out interesting news tidbits, but most importantly, it's a it's a way to connect with other people that are having contact experiences and that are very committed to going and making a positive transition to this planet. So that's my, that's the uh, website, and of course, you can, there's the books on there, Trillion and Decimal, and both of those are for sale, And but there's just an awful lot of information, so I encourage people to go to www.ufo-truth.com. Okay, and of course, um, you're always up on my, you're going to be up on my website for the rest of the week. 
And then after that, you'll go into the ca uh, past guest link on my webpage for those of you who might not have written that down, and they can get to that directly through my website as well. And if they go there right now, they can go do it. As a matter of fact, I've been as you've been talking, I'm at your website right now. Um, I'm looking at it. Um, you always have tons and tons of information. Um, what I think is, is, is the most valuable, though, here for people, um, Mark, is that this is a shared forum. It also is for those that, who are listening out there that maybe have not really explored the whole idea of uh, extraterrestrials or UFOs or what have you or, or still skeptical or would just like some unbiased, in my opinion, some unbiased information, your website's a very, very good place to go. And, you know, the other thing that I wanted to talk about kind of as a, a follow-up, unfortunately, for tonight's show that we were talking about originally was that, you know, they, they showed Mr. Hopkins, I believe it is, is the National Center for UFO Sightings to call or to contact. There are other people that you can also contact that they didn't talk about. You know, not only yourself, I mean, certainly you've got a huge group of people where people can uh, reach out and, and assist and, and give guidance and also direct people in the right attention direction depending on what they need. Um, also, another person that um, is involved in this is a gentleman by the name of Brian Bike, um, also uh, does a lot of UFO research on his own. Yes. So there's lots and lots of people out there. Um, it would be really great if we could all kind of get together, you know, as a whole and kind of become more solidified as a, as a unit, if you will, um, well, as a place and a source for people to go. That's right, uh, Rebecca. And, of course, they didn't even mention tonight the entire mutual UFO, you know, network, MUFON, which is oh, a national right. organization. They exactly. didn't even talk about that one. I know. And that, 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 I thought that was a disservice. You know, that was the other thing that I had, had also made mention of or wrote down and forgot to talk about it. Yeah. So why don't you, why don't you go ahead and explain that a little bit to those who are listening? Well, MUFON is a national organization that's headquartered in Denver, Colorado, and it investigates all of these phenomena, and they have field investigators that go out and talk with people. If you happen to be in Kansas or Illinois or Ohio or Colorado or California, they have an organization, a local organization, in each of those states, uh, every every one of the 50 states that will go out and investigate. So they have a wealth of information, and I'm surprised that they did not uh, interview them because they came to the MUFON uh, conference last summer. Uh, the whole ABC crew came there and interviewed all kinds of people. Well, yeah, um, there was a lot of things, I think, that they left out of it that it was originally supposed to be there. Let's hope that they do a follow-up with this and, and make it a little bit more... So I think the final, you know, thing I would leave your audience with would be that uh, UFOs are just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole lot more to this larger reality. There's a lot more going on, and UFOs are kind of opening the crack, if you will, uh, to this huge thing, get you outside the box you've been living in, and find out that there is a wonderful, beautiful universe out there, and that we can go and make it into an incredibly beautiful planet if we just want to make up our minds to do that. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about your two books, which was Killian and Decimal. They can also get that information. Knowing the truth changes everything. Mark, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Rebecca, and we're going to be in touch pleasure. and look for some new information. Are you at a crossroads in your life? Or maybe you have a particular question or need direction in romance, relationships, employment, whatever it might be. It's time to talk to Rebecca, a truly gifted intuitive and clairvoyant. Call and set up your private consultation. Get that special insight you've been looking for. Call 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Find out where your life's journey will lead you. Talk with an intuitive touch. Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome, welcome back, and thank you so much for joining me this evening and my very lovely guest, Mark Kimmel, who is the author of Trillion and Decimal. Uh, please go to my website, journeyswithrebecca.com, click on his link, or you can go directly to his link at cosmicparadigm.com. Um, this is a this show here was meant to just be an eye-opener, also to let people know there is work out there. There's also information out there. I want to thank uh, my very, very wonderful sponsor of Journeys with Rebecca, which is Space Magazine. Please contact them. Let them know that I referred you there or that you heard it on Journeys with Rebecca. Let them know about that. And also to uh, HealthyLife.net for the ability uh, to be able to broadcast the show to 